Tuesday, March 20th, 1849. Our family, consisting of father, mother, two brothers and one sister, left this morning for that far off and much talked of country, California. A wave farewell to kind teachers and schoolmates, a last glimpse of our old home on the hill, and we were off. The diary of 14-year-old Sally Hester is just one record of an epic experience in American history. The emigration of 500,000 men, women, and children by covered wagon through the American West. Their destination lay beyond the Indian lands explored by Francis Parkman, beyond the Rocky Mountains, beyond the desert and the Sierra Nevada, all the way to the Pacific coastlands, to Oregon and California. In Sally's words, the land of gold and Italian skies. Here, it was said, a good life was waiting, fertile soil and a climate that would give a new lease of life to Sally's ailing father. It was a journey that would take five months a 2,000-mile passage in the humblest means of transport imaginable. These first pioneers blazed a trail that would open the West to millions. For Sally, the journey began by steamboat from her home in Indiana to the remote town of St. Joseph, Missouri. We're standing on the western edge of civilization back in 1848. This was Missouri and it was part of the United States, but right across the river in what is today Kansas was Indian territory. That was the territory of the Sac and Fox and Kickapoo Indians. So when you left St. Joseph, you literally headed out into the wilderness. St. Joe, April 27th. Well, here we are, safe and sound. And we expect to remain here several days, laying in supplies and waiting our turn to be ferried across the river. The town presents a striking appearance, a vast army on wheels. There are wagons as far as the eye can see, and crowds of men and women and children, and the cattle and horses upon which our lives depend. The emigrants who'd gathered at this point of departure were a mixed bunch. Most were poor, tenant farmers tired of renting land or workers who'd hit hard times in the crises of the late 1830s. Some were Mormons, escaping religious persecution. Others were fresh off the boats from Europe. They'd come to the States for a better life, only to find this new world as crowded and oppressive as the old. In the West, they saw the promise of a second chance, worth the dangers of the journey ahead. On May 6th, the Hesters were ferried across the Missouri in a party of 50 wagons. The first leg was prairie. May 21st, Sunday. Our family's all in good health. When we left St. Joe, my mother had to be lifted in and out of our wagons. Now she walks a mile or two without stopping and handles the wagons as spry as a young girl. It's a beautiful spot. The plains are all covered with flowers. The plains were beautiful, but inhospitable, just grassland for hundreds of miles. No protection from the weather, nor from the Indians, who watched resentful of this alien procession through their tribal lands. We are now in the Pawnee Nation, a dangerous and hostile tribe. We are obliged to watch them carefully, and we double our guards at night. When we camp, we form a corral with our wagons, and inside of this corral, we drive our cattle. Six weeks into their journey, and the Hesters had passed Fort Laramie and were moving northwest through the more broken landscapes of Wyoming. It's a terrain familiar to pioneer reenactors, as Candy Moulton explains. 
we're out here today on the Cherokee Trail, which was a route to California in 1849 and 1850. And the folks who are traveling here by wagon train are um, obviously modern day reenactors, but we just like to go by wagon about four miles an hour and behind mules and horses we travel along. We've traveled a lot of trails in the past together. Inspector Maggie, get up. When you begin traveling on the trails, you follow the same terrain that they followed 150 years ago. Almost always you stay near the water courses because that's what you had to have in order to water your animals and for yourself as well. Farther to the west, um, in western Nebraska, the land starts to dry out. Your wagon wheels start to dry up, and so you had to do a lot more repairs on your wagons day after day after day, and it's exhausting, exhausting travel. On July 2nd, 1849, the Hesters reached Independence Rock. The rock was a marker, the halfway point, and a place to record your passage. Many of these people never made it. Names carved here match up with names on gravestones further up the trail. We as a company are all in good health, but the cholera is raging, graves everywhere. And the great journey was only half over. With the plains behind them, the emigrants now had to contend with the mountains. Sometimes the terrain is just very difficult. You start getting into the mountains and it's long poles and hard on stock. And you've already been traveling for maybe two, two and a half months. By the time you get to that point, the grass and the forage isn't as good. And they would go 20, 30, 40 miles without water. August 20th. Water and grass is scarce, and what water there is isn't fit to drink. But we're obliged to use it, for there's nothing else. The roads are rocky, and the dust is horrible. The men wear veils tied over their hats, and when they reach camp at night, they are covered with dust from head to heel. Most people made it without any problem. But of course, not everybody did. And the most well-known of all the trail tragedies going to California is the Donner Party. What really happened is they got to the Sierra Nevada too late, and their stock was worn out, and they were worn out, and it started to snow, and they got stranded. Thursday, September 14th, we arrived at the place where the Donner Party perished having lost their way and being snowed in. Two log cabins and the bones of human beings and animals was all that was left to tell the tale of that ill-fated party. What Sally's diary does not mention is that the way they survived was to resort to cannibalism, eating each other in order to actually just survive that awful period in the snow of the Sierra Nevada. And now it's September 21st. And thanks to a kind providence, we are nearing the end of our long and perilous journey. A five months trip from St. Joe and our party of 50 wagons has at last reached this haven of rest and we're strangers in a strange land. I wonder what the future will hold for us. <laughs>